Okay, we're going to have a presentation on regional housing needs allocation and housing elements by Kern Cog. Yes. Um, good evening, everyone. My name's Rochelle and Vina, and um, tonight's workshop is on RENA and housing elements. I'll go over the purpose and process of the RENA and housing elements, um, Kern's progress towards um, our regional housing needs. Um, also go over the assistance and funding availability and also an upcoming law that um, Becky Napier will cover. So this graphic shows how the RENA plan, the Regional Transportation Plan, and the SES are all um, coordinated and related to each other. And that's because of Senate Bill 375, which was passed back in 2008, which is the Sustainable Communities and Climate Protection Act. So um, basically, they wanted, uh, the Senate bill wanted the housing and transportation to be coordinated. So the RENA plan is updated um, every eight years. So our next one would be updated with the next RTP in 2022. So the RENA is a state requirement which addresses the housing needs um, at the local level and the regional level. It's a measurement of future housing needs for all income levels, which include very low, low, moderate, and above moderate, which is shown on the table here. And it's not a building quota. And our local governments re must revise their housing element after the RENA plan is adopted. So the process, so HCD um, determines the state's housing needs, then they assign um, the regional share to the Council of Governments, to Kern. So then Kern COG develops the RENA plan um, for our region. And through this, we hold public workshops and we consult with your cities and the county to, to um, developed um, each jurisdiction's share of the regional um, housing need. And the, the draft plan and then the RENA plan is also presented to the Regional Planning Advisory Committee and also to the board before um, approval. And after approval of the RENA plan, um, then your um, jurisdiction will be updating the housing element. And after the housing element is adopted, uh, it's important that uh, you actually you oh, that you'll be submitting your annual progress report to HCD. And uh, so the annual progress report is basically uh, your your status update on how your jurisdiction is. Um, is meeting its housing housing share. So the next uh, housing element due date will be 2023. So this table shows a summary of our RENA share. So we're about 40% into the current cycle, the fifth cycle. So currently, um, we're about 16% towards the total allocation for the Kern County 60 of 67,673 housing units. So we're about 42, we're meeting about 42.3% of our moderate income, but we're a little behind on the very, for the other um, income levels. But hopefully at the end of um, the cycle, which will be 2023, will be, we have reached um, our housing share. And as a reminder, this is not a building quota, so there, currently there is no penalty if we don't meet our housing unit share. And then so for the next cycle, the sixth cycle, it'll be a new RENA, so it'll be different numbers based on the, the next growth forecast. And, and Kern is not alone in you know, 
uh, not meeting its housing share. So that's why um, in 2017, um, Governor Brown uh, passed a housing bill which had 15 bills that aimed to address the housing shortage and, um, and at the, the high housing costs. And one of those um, bills is Senate Bill 35, which is the streamlined ministerial approval process. And this helps jurisdictions who are not permitting sufficient housing units to, um, with assistance. And to those jurisdictions who are also not um, submitting their annual progress reports. So this provides a streamlined process for jurisdictions to approved developments, um, and, but the requirements are there at an infill site, they um, comply with current uh, zoning, and also that they provide at least 10% of units for low income. And I provided the link for more information on this Senate bill. And another um, planning grant, uh, another, another Senate bill is planning grant program. SB2. And this is established um, to provide a permanent source of funding um, to increase affordable housing stock. And all our jurisdictions and the county um, could have access to uh, this funding. So Kern County and Bakersfield have, uh, a could, are available for 625,000, and that's because it's based on population, and then the rest of our jurisdictions have about 160,000. There are a, a few requirements, and that is that the housing element must be compliant, and they've submitted their APRs. And you could use the funding to update your general plan, update zoning ordinances, and environmental analysis. And on June 5th, we actually held a workshop here at KernCog um, where HCD and um, the another technical assistant team uh, person came and uh, gave a presentation on SB2 and how um, they're here to help um, our jurisdictions apply for the funding that's available. And it was very well attended by all our, our agencies. I think all agencies except one um, ca came to the meeting, but I followed up with that agency and provided them um, the presentation and the uh, technical assistant team contact information. And the housing package also um, included um, several uh, programs to address homelessness. And these are just um, a few of the programs that, are, that have current um, funding available. And there's more um, programs for homelessness available on this web, this, the website. And next is um, AB 101, which is a local government planning support grants program, which will be discussed by Becky. Thank you, Rochelle. Um, yes, AB 101 really kind of came up on us very quickly. Um, it currently has been enrolled and is on the governor's desk for signature. I've been watching it. Um, we thought it would be signed by now, but it, it has not, but we expect it to be signed anytime soon. Um, it provides regions and jurisdictions with one-time funding, including grants for planning activities to enable jurisdictions to meet the sixth cycle of the regional housing needs assessment. The Department of Housing and Community Development will administer the program to provide grants to regions and jurisdictions. And H we've been told that HCD will be coming up with their own guidelines. We have not seen a draft of those at this point. So there will be a lot more coming um, in the next month or so, hopefully. Um, it will give $250 million distributed under the program and $125 million available to COGS and other regional entities. The San Joaquin Valley Multi-Agency Working Group consists of Fresno COG, Kern COG, King's County Association of Governments, Madera um, K 
County Transportation Commission, Merced County Association of Government, San Joaquin COG, Stanislaus COG, and Tulare COG. So it's all the San Joaquin Valley COGs. Funds will be allocated to the San Joaquin Valley Multi-Agency Working Group. Each county, which means all eight counties, will have to name one representative from the county, two city representatives, one from a larger city and one from a smaller city, and they don't designate at this point that it has to be the largest city or the smallest city. It's it's exactly in those terms, larger city and one smaller city. And of the three represent, and those are uh, picked by the city selection committee. So I have already um, corresponded with Kathleen Krauss from the county who uh, manages the city selection committee. So she's well aware of, of this coming. And of the three representatives, at least one representative shall also be a member of the COG board. Um, I have a date. We have to we have to have all of this done by November. I believe it's thirtieth. Um, it's in late November, so we don't have a lot of time. But they did push back that date. They originally had it in September, so it really we were going to be on a really short timeline to try to get eight counties, all with all their representatives selected. Um, we hope to have more details, um, especially once after it's signed that um, HCD will come up with the guidelines. Um, so please don't miss the September 19th meeting. And I'll try to answer any questions that I can. Thank you. Is this just planning money? Yes. It's strictly for planning. Go back to the slide about the group. So. W there's an existing San Joaquin Valley Policy Council, which is made up of those COGS, correct? Yes. So would that end up being what is used? They, uh, what the uh, COG directors at their last meeting discussed, and I'll let Aaron address that if he wishes, um, is that they would use that policy council as the regional entity for um, AB 101, but I'll let Aaron address that. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, I can add a little bit to that. So, w while this um, bill was being drafted, uh, the, many of the authors and other agencies consulted with um, staff of the COGS up and down the state, so that they they were aware when they wrote this bill that that organization existed. Um, as, as well as other organizations in the state. The, the Central Coast has a similar group. So the law was written um, knowing that there was a, a group that already exists um, that we could give the additional responsibility of housing to. It, however, it does not require um, us to select that group. But our, my recommendation, and, and as well as the other COG directors, is that we not reinvent the wheel and form yet another group. It'd be pretty group. difficult to do that by November 30th. Co correct. So, so a, a, as as you know, because you've previously served in this this group, previously the appointments to that group have been made strictly by the Cogs, but this law, when it is when it is when it does become a law, now requires the city selection committee and the Board of Supervisors to be involved with, with those appointments. And it also requires at least one of those members have a, uh, have a seat on the COG. So it, it changes the, the way the appointments will be made, potentially. I, if you, as the elected officials that are part of that group, choose to use that group. I mean, there, there could be an option you choose where that group continues to exist and does what they do and then a completely new group is formed to deal with housing only and when does that decision get made all, all this needs to be signed decided before the end of november november 30th is the final day so we kern cog would vote september 19th 
whether or not to support the San Joaquin Valley Policy Council as our group, or who, uh, how would that get decided? Right, right now, my recommendation and all the other seven cogs in the Central Valley are going to recommend that we use that group. So uh, that would, uh, again, that would then be on our agenda for September nineteenth, or what or I expect to be on the agenda for for um, for September is is one an update on when and if this AB one hundred one is signed, and what additional information we have from HCD. I'll also update you on what the other seven Valley Cogs have done or are, are planning to do. But uh, again, the appointments, uh, we have that on our agenda tonight to right. appoint to, point to this group. We had it on our agenda last month. Um, it's completely up to this board whether they want to make an appointment um, that, that may change in, in uh, an another month. Uh, and we can discuss that l uh, later if y if you'd like. Right. Yeah, it may make sense to what I'm hearing to put that off and do that in September when we know more. But we'll discuss that. Mr. Chair, if I may ask uh, a question. Um, sure. But now this group is supposed to consist only of three people because it's it says one from the county and two from cities one a large and one a small and of the three one must be a cog member is that is that the the makeup of a new group uh, council member vallejo it can be a new group or or you can elect to to use the existing group right now we are recommending that you use the existing group since okay. they're already formed they we already have staff assigned to that group and, and the other um the other thing that's in the law that was discussed with all of us w while this law was being developed is there's an incentive for the eight uh, valley counties to form this group in the form of six million extra dollars. Is that correct? Is that the correct number? Yes. S so, so if the the eight counties in the San Joaquin Valley, from Kern in the south all the way way up to um, San Joaquin in the north agree on by November 30th <laughs> to a, a regional forum, the incentive is an additional $6 million that will be, be given to us. So y you don't have to agree. Uh -huh. you, don't ha you, you don't have to accept that $6 million, but I and think and the authors are assuming that you will take that $6 million and form this group. Yeah. A and um, the existing group is represented by um, small cities, large cities, how, how many on the are in the existing group? So, so the, the existing group, and, and you've participated in this group, this is the, the group the same uh, one. that we went to Sacramento with, and you, you were part of that trip. Right. This group tra traditionally goes to Sacramento once a year. They also go to Washington, D.C. once a year. Um, and it was the same group that hosted the uh, event that uh, you and I both attended in Lamore. Lamore. Mm -hmm. So it, it's that group. Right now, it consists of two, uh, two, at least two members from each of the Cogs, um, and many of them have alternates. W we currently have um, two two appointees to that group, and I believe one alternate. And and last last month, I know you weren't here, Council Member. Mm -hmm. w w we had on the agenda to. Um, we propose to appoint you as a alternate to that group, but that w action was delayed until this month, and we will be taking that up on the COG agenda later tonight. Mm, okay. Does that does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, you asked a question about um, the funding. Um, it says. It provides jurisdictions and other local agencies with technical assistance, planning, temporary staffing, or consultant needs associated with the updating local planning and zoning documents, expediting application processing, and other actions to accelerate additional housing production. So it, it, it's, pla it's planning funds, not building funds. But it could be used for a myriad of, of things. But it couldn't be used as incentive money for developers or anything like no. that. 
substitute fees, anything, reduction of fees. Well, uh, let, let me add something. There, there have been discussions that it could be used, and, and we, we obviously it's not law yet, so we have to continue to have discussions. But there's been discussions that the money could be used to offset impact fees. So in, in, in that case, it would be a, 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 right. a pretty good incentive in some cases. Oh, we, we don't know the answer to that question yet, but it's certainly being discussed um, throughout the state right now. Okay. Any other questions? No, no the, the bill the bill is enrolled so it's um, past the point where it can be amended it's uh, past the house I'm, I'm sorry past the assembly and the state assembly state senate and it is literally on the governor's desk it's called enrolled waiting for his signature Depends on the interpretation, I think, is what I'm hearing. The, 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 the bill is a very lengthy bill, and I in, encourage all of you and your, your city's councils uh, to re read the group. I'm certain that um, the League of Cities and the Association of Counties will, will certainly have questions. Um, I, the bottom line is I can't answer that question right, right now, a council member. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, also keep in mind that HCD will be coming out for, with guidelines. So the guidelines right. may address that issue as well. Great. Thank you for the presentation. And we have about four minutes before we officially get started. Call to order the Kern Council of Government's Transportation Planning Policy Committee of Thursday, July 18th at 6.31. And we'll start with Pledge of Allegiance. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Garola. Present. B. Smith. I'm here. Lucinovich. Vallejo. Here. Crump. Here. Cantu. Mauer. Alvarado. Here. Cryer. Here. P. Smith. Here. Reina. Here. Couch. Scrivener. Miller. Here. Carr. Here. Para. Here. And Kiernan. Thank you. Thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes with the authority of the chair to extend the time limit as deemed appropriate for conducting the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Do we have any public comments? Seeing none, consent agenda. Opportunity for public comment on the consent agenda. Does anyone want to pull anything off the consent agenda or have comment on anything that is on the consent agenda? Seeing none. Does any member wish to pull anything off the consent agenda? I see. Second. Second. Roll call vote. 
Garola? Yes. B. Smith? Yes. Vallejo? Yes. Crump? Yes. Alvarado? Yes. P. Smith? Yes. Reina? Yes. Miller? Yes. Uh, Carr? Yes. Para? Yes. Thank you. Item 5. 2019 Mr. Federal. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. Uh, we forgot Orchel in the roll call. How could we do that? <laughs> and Cryer. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I can mark you here. Item 5, 2019 Federal Transportation Improvement Program, Draft Amendment Number 5, Ms. Pacheco. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Amendment number five includes revisions to the State Highway Operations and Protection Program and the Non-Motorized Program. The Non-Motorized Program includes a new active transportation program project for the City of Bakersfield approved at the May California Transportation Commission meeting. The public review period ends July 19th. The Kern Cog Executive Director will consider approval of the amendment on July 22nd. State and federal approval is required. At this time, I ask the chair to please open the public hearing, allow for public comment, and then close the public hearing. The public hearing is now open. Do we have any comments? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Caltrans report. Uh, good evening. Let's start off with our um, Formoso 4699 bridge replacement. Uh, the work will be completed next week, so I won't probably be reporting on that. So uh, that's good news that that's done. And then uh, our State Route 46 um, highway widening project um, between uh, Lost Hills Road and I-5, which is a big project for, for Kern. Currently, um, what they're doing out there is uh, driving piles at the main flood canal bridge. They're constructing the west side canal drainage system, and then they're doing a lot of roadway excavation. They do have lane closures um, on Kern 5 um, for bridge con or they may have closures um, due to uh, the reconstruction or bridge construction. There are traffic delays, on the, especially on the weekends. They aren't going to complete this until probably this time next year. Uh, traffic, what they've been doing as far as traffic management, um, they're putting additional portable changeable message signs on 46 west of uh, current 33 to inform the public as to there could be delays and what's going on. They also have requested our traffic management center to turn on the um, changeable message signs on 46 over the weekends. Most of the time delay is on 46 eastbound it is because they're trying not, they're trying to eliminate or minimize the backup on Kern 5. Uh, it is much safer to, if they have a choice, it's much safer to have delays on 46 than to back up on I-5. That's way too dangerous. So for safety reasons, but they are trying to do a better job of alerting the public, giving them some options, and letting them know that there's going to be delays. Uh, on 99, we have a rehabilitation job, um, and it's um, just a 0.3 miles south, uh, south of Palm Avenue over crossing to the Beardsley um, Canal Bridge and then on 178 at the separation of 99 and 178. Uh, currently what they're doing for the next 30 days is southbound and northbound medium work from just south of Palm Avenue over crossing to just north of uh, the 205 over crossing. They're also doing southbound uh, work on, um, they're doing panel replacements in the northbound and southbound number one lanes from Olive Drive to Beardsley Canal. Um, Rosedale Highway, uh, they're doing a, uh, putting up a retaining wall um, and um, that's being constructed currently and then um, PG&E power pole relocation also on Rosedale Highway. They do have extended lane closures. These closures are currently in place and will not be reopened to traffic until 2021. 
Um, that's the number one lane northbound. That's closed from 58 over crossing to just north of uh, the 204 over crossing. Also in the number one lane, this is southbound. It's, it's been closed from Beardsley Canal to just south of Palm Avenue over crossing. Nightly closure of adjacent lanes may be needed weekly from Sunday to Thursday to complete the work um, on Palm Avenue to Beardsley Canal. Only one closure will be permitted per location or direction, excuse me. Ramp closures are potentially scheduled for the end of August. Uh, the Cottonwood um, East Rehab. Um, oh, I don't have the latest report. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I do. What did I do with it? You know, John, my, you're, it's, you, you know what? I sent you the latest one, and I didn't print me one. So, John, can you come up and report on Cottonwood, please? <laughs> no. This, oh, I don't know if it's the same thing. Thank you, John. Boy, I owe you. Um, so Cottonwood East Rehab, that's on 58 in Bakersfield, um, from Cottonwood Road undercrossing to where the 58 and 184 separation. The project is progressing in a westbound direction currently. The contractor is continuing to place the rebarb and concrete for the continuous reinforced concrete pavement, which is pavement that lasts at least 50 years, and that's in the westbound direction. I got a last minute update on that and so I told John and Veronica, wait, here, forget the last one. Here's a new one. Well, I didn't print me one. So thank goodness. Uh, Cache Creek Bridge replacement on 58, eight miles east of Tehachapi from Sand Canyon overhead to just east of Cache Creek. Contractors working on reinforcing inside shoulders and constructing medium crossovers in preparation for traffic switch. Paving took place on July 1st and continued through July 3rd. Striping uh, took place on July 8th through July 11th. Traffic switch was done July 10th. And moving eastbound traffic to west, the westbound side of 58 Eastbound Cache Creek Bridge demolition started July 11th. Work for next month con continued bridge demolition and then they'll begin the bridge construction. The Summit Overhead Bridge Rails, um, that's on State Route 58 near Tehachapi at Summit Overhead. Grinding is in process and the bridge work um, started on June 19th. False work was insta installed on July 12th. Demolition started a couple days ago. Work for next month is demolition, drill, um, and then bond dowels, grading overhang, and forming the edge of the deck uh, will occur on eastbound and westbound of the bridge railing. Lardo Can Canal medium gap closure um, on 99. Work con currently scheduled for the next 30 days is construction area signs were placed um, on the 8th and the 12th of this month. Traffic handling will be done this week. Um, in fact, it started on the 15th and it's ending on, um, act actually ends tomorrow. And then they're gonna sh uh, shift traffic onto the outside shoulders on both the north and southbound lanes. Medium work behind care rail uh, will follow thereafter. They do Plan nightly closures are anticipated the northbound and southbound lanes from starting a couple, well, the 15th, and that'll continue through the end of August. On Sundays and Thursdays from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m., both inside and outside shoulders will be closed, um, and that will that started a couple days ago, but it's going to continue into February of okay. next year. Bell Terrace overcrossing, that's to construct an auxiliary lane and replace Bell Terrace Bridge on 99. The information of this project remains pretty much the same um, as it did l last month, um, but they are progress they're making progress on retaining wall and the Bell Terrace Bridge. The new connector uh, for south northbound 99 and eastbound 58, uh, the bridge is nearing completion and should be open the next couple of months. Moving on to the uh, California Aqueduct Bridge Overlay, um, and that's on uh, I-5 and 99, 
and its freight corridor improvement. That has to do with load rating, improving the load rating on the bridge. Contractors started work on the approach slabs um, this week. They've got three weeks of this type of work, which involves excavating the traffic lane uh, two feet down. Uh, immediately before and after the bridge, replacing with rapid set concrete each night. They'll complete this work simultaneously with the new medium barriers going in. Their last working day will be August 1st, but it's, light un it's unlikely they will finish by then. That's what they already said. They started work on the job lake, and while they've been making a lot of progress over the past month, a few key equipment breakdowns and some supplier delays have slowed things down. Specifically, they had a delay uh, on cement that is currently held up in train cars at the Mexican border. Mm -hmm. This could resolve itself quickly, and they're exploring other supply options, but um, the, um, the RE is confident that, um, that they're, barring no other hiccups, that, that they'll be okay, and, and that there's a good chance that they'll finish by mid-August. So. Uh, the I-5 and 99 bridge separation and pavement rehabilitation, um, that is on, at a junction of 99 and I-5 at Panama Lane overcrossing. Work currently scheduled coming up for the next 30 days. Lowering of lanes and shoulders, which vertical clearance improvement on northbound 99 at um, I-5 overcrossing. Work includes excavation, hot mix asphalt, and continuous reinforced concrete placement. The northbound number three lane and outside shoulder replacement work from a, um, will take place. Trimming medium oleanders throughout the project. There will be traffic control. There'll be long-term closures with K-Rail 24 hours, seven days a week. That will be on southbound Route 99, which is reduced to two lanes on I-5. Northbound 99 is reduced to two lanes and detoured onto southbound 99 at I-5. Northbound 99 is shifted to medium and reduced to two lanes from Sandria Road to Union Avenue. And northbound 99 may be reduced to one lane nightly from David Corpus Christi Road to Union Avenue. Nightly closures may be in place from Sunday night through Friday, six nights per week. North Bound ramp closures are a possibility at Sandria Road, Herring Road, and Union Avenue um, are anticipated, uh, and then consecutive ramps will consecutive ramps will not be closed though. Uh, Stockdale Enos Roundabout, um, that's on State Route 43 at Stockdale Highway. Work has not begun yet. Uh, work should begin uh, this month, which we have a couple more weeks, with the final utility clearance. From um, from the project footprint, that's that is complete. They do have the utilities out of the way, um, so that will allow them to get going. Um, One nineteen and forty three, which is a roundabout, uh, remains closed to through traffic while construction is ongoing. Work on the westbound 119 roadway improvements continues with work wor earthwork for the sub basin embankment and curb and gutter completed texture paving and sidewalk at the roundabout and medium island so they're doing it sounds like they're doing some kind of decorative treatment there which they've been doing in some of the um, roundabouts and trying to I think um, make them a little more attractive so they do probably some kind of stamping work on the concrete I think that's what I, it, it sounds like and then they're doing um, some paving is anticipated to be completed by uh, first week of August. Once westbound 119 improvements are completed, the contractor will shift traffic onto the north portion of 119 and commence with work on the eastbound 119 improvements shortly after that, which should be around mid-August tentatively. Um, last couple projects, the gap closure. Um, on 58 and uh, 99 separation to Cottonwood Road. Uh, placing concrete reinforcement. Lane closures on the westbound number one lane may be closed for concrete operations. And then the 99 connector traffic will be detoured from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Traffic is being split 
which should continue uh, for two more months. They hope to complete this project in December of um, this year. And then the last project is construct a rock blanket at gore areas and maintenance vehicle pullouts. The contract, and that's on 178, the contract will be moving into rock blanket construction, the gore areas, over the next month. And that concludes my um, report. And there's just, all, I mean, we all know, we've been reading about it. There's just a lot of construction going on, which you is a good thing. Paper, no, no, no. <laughs> you're stuck. There's, a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I know it's an inconvenience, but it's a good thing. It's a lot of a lot of money being spent in uh, transportation in Kern County. So, um, and it'll be all nice when it's finally done. Thank you. I, I just had a question on uh, the roundabout at, at 119 and the the future bike path going. From Enos, does does the bike path get back to Enos before then, and then go through the roundabout? Do you know how that design works, Mr. Chairman? The 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 bike path the county is is building will stop at the roundabout, and then the bicycles and or pedestrians that are using the the bike path will negotiate the roundabout. And I believe there's s sidewalks on it, but I'm not positive. And then the bike path will pick up again at the south end of the roundabout and continue on to uh, Buena Vista Lake. Could, could you check on the sidewalks and you know, what happens there? And also that, that bike path there, we had the presentation on it a few months ago. Could, could you follow up on that and see how that's moving forward with the county? The, the Buena Vista? Yes. Uh, uh, I have an up update now, Great. if you'd like. The, um, the county is still short one parcel. It is the the uh, racetrack parcel. They need either an easement or, or property um, to, to make the bike path fit. They are currently in negotiations with with the final parcel, fi final property owner. And, and as, as you may know, the owner of that property died within the last two years, so they're negotiating with, with the heirs to the property. So they're not going through the condemnation or anything at this point? They, they, they have not initiated condemnation yet. They believe that they <coughs> will be able to make a deal. I Thank you. So, so that path is it's completely designed now? I mean, there it's... I, I don't believe the design is 100% done. If you remember, Yolanda was here a couple of months ago. She said they just finished uh, environmental. Um, so they, they are actually working on design while they're negotiating for the, the last parcel. And if you all remember, the county received a one-year extension, and that will expire in about nine or ten months from now. Thank you. Uh, District 9, Caltrans. Uh, if oh, right. I was going to say, I had a question, but I'm not okay. sure uh, who it's going to apply to. It has to do with uh, roundabout. And, uh, Gail, we have the roundabout there on, we call it Garces Highway. I don't know the actual number of the state route. Um, do you know if the bill that the governor signed was for all roundabouts or just ours where we could name it after someone that was still alive? Because that's how we got, we had to go after that because the gentleman, Mr. Brar, who kind of has a landlock all over Delano, um, he would donate the land, but uh, he wanted it named after him. And I understood the bill was, a bill was signed, but I didn't know if it applied just to our roundabout. And I honestly don't know anything about that. I hadn't heard anything. Okay. And, I mean, certainly can look into it. Yeah. That's okay. Interesting. Uh, you might check with Assemblyman Solace because it okay. was his rep that came to our council meeting oh, Monday, okay. and uh, he's the one that mentioned it. And I thought, well, I hadn't seen anything, and usually I see something when, you know, we're working on. Well, yeah. Trying to get something done. Thank you. 
Any other questions? District 9. We don't have we don't have as much construction going on <laughs> <laughs> District 9 currently. <laughs> Uh, however, we did. Um, we have a number of projects that are uh, that we're waiting for funding. So uh, I suspect that the next uh, year or two will be busy. Uh, there is one project though on 58 between Tehachapi and Bakersfield. They've been doing uh, slab concrete slab replacement and striping. The striping has stopped for the last 10 miles because they first have to do the the concrete. Uh, on that stretch, and then they'll uh, then they'll uh, continue with the striping, and that uh, area should be done completely by early fall. Uh, funds awaiting. We're awaiting sh uh, funds <laughs> for the Mojave pavement rehabilitation. Uh, we also have funds waiting on uh, uh, re uh, pavement rehabilitation on um, the Freeman Section Three. <coughs> And then uh, we've applied for uh, right-of-way support and capital for the Freeman Gulch 2 segment. And uh, Olancha Cartago, uh, we're uh, working on right-of-way, so acquiring permits and mitigation. And then even though it's in the future, the Rosamond uh, Mojave Rehabilitation, it's uh, on track for listing in the beginning of 2020, but it's going to be it's going to disrupt a lot of traffic so we're already starting to uh, put in your uh, mind that there's going to have to be quite a media blitz to uh, deal with the impact on traffic then uh, unplanned projects uh, happened uh, with the earthquakes in around Ridgecrest and uh, so what happened you know we, you know that there was the July 4th earthquake and then the next day the you know the Friday earthquake the big ones uh, by the next day, uh, by Saturday, the weekend, they had they got a, a $3.1 million emergency contract by, and then they started work on Sunday. And, and by Wednesday, emergency repairs were completed. So it was wow. very fast. It was, uh, there was a number of, of districts that all worked together. So we had, you know, District 9, there was District 6, District 7 and District 8 all jumped in and uh, to inspect and to repair the damage. The, uh, as an example, there's still earthquakes occurring and uh, so District 9 is continuing to monitor assets as needed. For instance, yesterday at 9.58 p.m. there was a 4.6 earthquake near Olancha. The independence, in in the crew, our maintenance crew in Independence, uh, immediately started checking structures and inspecting, uh, you know, for damage. And by 2 a.m. this morning, they reported that they had, you know, checked everything and everything was good. So they they're jumping on it as quickly as possible. There's and the amount of area that they're covering when an earthquake occurs depends because it's quite a you know sparsely populated it, it depends how you know how, how congested it is uh, and for instance the um, when when it hit the first ones hit Ridgecrest there was uh, 31 state assets that had to be inspected including bridges maintenance stations culverts roadways so uh, just that's a head just a update for you on that thank you thank you that, that is it. Yeah. question on the uh, in our packet we uh, on the TPP C report we did the uh, the update on the uh, step and I can see that Freeman Gulch is pushed out a couple of years now correct yes so um, are there going to be efforts shifted to highway 8 58 climbing lanes since that one's pushed out I want to keep that in the forefront of everyone and is it possible we need to have uh, is it possible we need to have a maybe an update on uh, 14 and 395 and 58 those those projects that are on that fi well I can give you um, an update on the climbing lanes for 58 we're in the process of um, applying for a CMAC grant uh, through with current uh, with Tehachapi uh, the CMAC the, that's the CMAC grants that are sponsored by Kern Cog 
and uh, we're in the we're writing that right now. So that would be for the first to finance the 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 phase zero, as they call it, which is the environmental uh, the environmental phase. And so we're looking for funding for that. So it's so we are working towards that. So phase zero. Yeah, is that <laughs> great? Doesn't sound is that a great name for uh, it? Just <laughs> to keep it in the forefront, this is yeah. a 20 years we've been. I know looking at this, and and we are. We are a goods movement hub here in Bakersfield. This is a, a tax free project. This is very regional significant, uh, actually uh, national significance. And whatever funding we can get to push this along, when you consider the Amazon project nearing completion, when is that, this year? Or, I mean, we're getting these distribution centers. We're going to have more vehicles on and more truck traffic. And we're still. 20 years behind, I think, getting those truck climbing lanes. So I agree. I'm just Thank you. pushing that out there best I can. It's, it's, I drove, I drove uh, 58 coming here, so I, and I have spent the last couple of weeks working on the CMAC application. Mm -hmm. So I've been in my mind splitting up lanes, figuring out how many, you know, cars. And so it was quite something now after having gone through that whole exercise to actually drive it. And uh, so the drive home will, will tell you. Oh man, mm -hmm. I know. The one thing, I'm so against. glad they weren't striping right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's so phase it. zero and a grant application. How long of a process is this application process? Good question. <laughs> um, it would be the, the CMAC application. Once, if you did get funding for it, it's a fast. You have to actually use it very quickly. I remember I was at the certification process. So our CMAC applications are due August 15th, and um, the funding is for fiscal years 2021 and 2122. And, and what would those funds be used for? Just planning right away or We've done the, design? the planning will be done. It's for the design. Okay. It's and because of the and we're looking at all three segments because there's three segments of of climbing lanes that we're looking at that's oh roughly eight miles in mm -hmm. length of different grades an average of oh they range from like uh, three and a half to about five a little over five percent grade uh, the the design analysis includes. There, there's a lot. There's the pavement. There would be everything from looking at endangered species, archaeological issues because you know Native American, to um, uh, to actually how they're going to reinforce. They're, they're, they've been looking at different scenarios, that and the, and you're looking at the cost effectiveness and whatnot. And it's everything from do you grade? Do you just cut the hill and grade it, or is it better to put walls up? So there's a lot of different scenarios that um, we've been discussing in the meet because there's been a lot of meetings going on in the last. Uh, the, I've only I've only come into Bishop in the last si since March, and uh, the uh, Highway 58 climbing lanes have been very a big part of my life since then. Um, so they they were given uh, a deadline. The CMAC uh, application deadline pushed them much faster than they thought they they they, they, they had to. And so they've got they got their estimate together this week, and now it's my uh, pr my task to summarize the uh, the tasks that uh, will be required to do the design phase and pres and uh, uh, present it to uh, Kern Cog. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're You'll welcome. We'll be discussing yeah. regularly. Oh, <laughs> I was in on the meeting in Tatchby a few months ago oh, where yeah, yeah. I, I saw the different segments. And uh, the costs involved. It's when you're going through a mountain range. Y eight miles doesn't seem like the very far, but when you're uh, cutting and filling, it's a it's a real big deal. Yeah. So thank you for keeping you. us in the forefront because we discussed this when the governor's uh, representative uh, Ogan Turplin came down with the initiative for all regions rising. I think this is a perfect time to say. Uh, Kern County being the hub of transportation goods movement that 
you've got to, if you can have the goods and start them to move, but if they, if they're constrained by a freeway, and that has to be of national significance. So, however that gets elevated is, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Seeing none, uh, executive director's report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Uh, first, I'll start uh, expanding a little bit on Council Member Smith's comments. I, I did talk with the District 9 director today, Brent Green, about uh, truck climbing lanes and the fact that um, the state will not be honoring their commitment. Uh, that goes back to 1998. Um, Council Member Smith, you will probably remember that. The agreement that we have between Caltrans, Inyo, and Mono County uh, calls for the state to contribute 40% to a project, the county from with where the project is 40%, and the other two counties 10%. So for Freeman Gulch 2, the project that you mentioned a, a few minutes ago, um, the state will not be able to honor their commitments in this 2020 cycle. Uh, we, we need to have some honest discussions w with the state about the way ahead on projects like Freem Freeman Gulch 2 th that uh, I if the state's commitment is not going to be there, there, Kern, Inyo, and Mono cannot afford to do that project. So I've, s I've stressed to District 9 that um, the truck climbing lanes are an important project and we ha if we have to put the uh, Freeman Gulch 2 on hold, we understand that, but uh, we want to have further discussions about the future of, of some of those projects. He agreed to come back um, in the what he described as early winter when the PSR is done on the truck climbing lanes. Give us an update. And I, I will be having conversations with all of you as a board about um, long-term projects such as F Freeman Two, Freeman Two, and F Freeman Three, and and having honest, uh, straightforward discussions with the state on whether we need to continue to fund those projects or whether we eventually need to cut bait. Essentially, uh, I have a few more items, Mr. Chairman. Um, I attended the CTC meeting in Sacramento on June 26th and 27th. Uh, City of Bakersfield received their first allocation in uh, what I've described to you before as an AB 3090 agreement for Centennial Corridor for about $6.3 million. There's a CTC meeting in San Jose, August 14th and 15th I will be attending. In this past uh, month I've met with Caltrans and Wonderful. Representative, uh, who also happens to be Mayor Cantu, about the pedestrian overcrossing in Lost Hills. Uh, I've also conducted a State Route 46 progress meeting uh, here in this office, and that that project, pro uh, the widening of Lost Hills, will be affected by um, by the lack of funding in the STIP. We. W Kern Cog and the state were both planning on putting money from the STIP into that final phase. So um, I will be working along with Caltrans um, side by side to try to fill that roughly $30 million hole within the next um, next year. And I, and I may be asking many of you for assistance with that. And uh, regarding that, um, that lack of funding on 46, uh, with the assistance of uh, Council Member Vallejo, I met with former Senator Dean Flores, who's now uh, Air Resources Board member. And you're saying, well, what does Air Resources Board have to do with funding 46? But there's recently a, a state law that was passed last year that requires the Air Resources Board and the California Transportation Commission, the group that funds all our transportation projects, to have at least two joint meetings a year. So I've um, tentatively scheduled a meeting with um, CTC staff and ARB member, former Senator Flores, for the next joint meeting of the CTC and the ARB, which will be held in Modesto on October 10th. And, and he will be assisting us um, to try to obtain 
additional funds for 46. Also this month I met with uh, Congressman McCarthy's staff and Assemblymember Fong's staff to update them on the um, loss of funds in, in the STIP, both for all the regions and at the statewide, and its impact on our projects, specifically Freeman 2 and uh, State Route 46. Um, it was uh, Caltrans District Mine 9 mentioned that they are applying for a CMAC grant. Most of your cities um, will be applying for either CMAC and RSTP grants. Those applications, as a reminder, are due August 15th. You should have seen um, something be come before you as council members or mayors uh, that involved a resolution um, that, that's part of the application pro process that your staff informs your boards uh, what projects they're going for that, and that is a, a requirement as part of the application process. If you haven't uh, acted on a resolution or don't have plans to act on a resolution before August 15th, please uh, let me know and please talk to your staff about that. Uh, subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report on this agenda. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, that meeting is adjourned and we will open the current Council of Governments meeting. Roll call is the same. Public comment. What roll call is different? Oh, Mr. Cantu has arrived. We will add that name. Thank you. Uh, public comment portion. Does any do we have any public that wishes to speak? Seeing none, I'll move to the consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern Cog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. Any public comment on the consent agenda? Does any member wish to remove any consent agenda items or have discussion? Seeing none, can I get a motion? Move to approve. A second. Roll call vote. Gorilla? Yes. B. Smith? Yes. Vallejo? Yes. Crump? Yes. Cantu? Yes. Alvarado? Yes. Cryer? Yes. P. Smith? Yes. Reina? Yes. Thank you. Item four, board appointment of a board member and two alternates to the San Joaquin Valley Policy Council. Ms. Napier. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, this item, um, as we discussed earlier, was tabled in June to this meeting. The San Joaquin Valley Regional Policy Council is a 16-member board that consists of two elected officials from each of the eight regional transportation planning agencies in the San Joaquin Valley. The Policy Council provides a forum for the Valley to communicate, discuss, and collaborate on issues that impact the entire region, such as transportation, air quality, and ad advocacy efforts, and it looks like we're ha adding housing. <laughs> so. Um, in addition to the three meetings per year, the board member and the alternate are also expected to prepare for and participate in the Valley Voice legislative meetings in Washington, D.C. in September and the Sacramento meetings in the spring. This includes taking on a speaking role in legislative meetings concerning legislation and or pertinent issues relevant to the Valley. In January of 2019, the Kern Cog Board appointed Manuel Cantu, the McFarland designee to the Kern Cog Board as the board member, and Alex Garcia, Wasco alternate designee to Kern Cog as the alternate. The minutes from that meeting are attached for your information, and I also went back and re-listened to the tape um, to make sure that that was the correct appointments of a, a board member and an alternate, and it was. 
Um, during the June meeting, the board was advised that Grace Vallejo was interested in becoming more involved in the policy council and would like to be named as a second alternate, which is allowed by the policy council. The board tabled the item to this meeting so that Ms. Vallejo could be in attendance. Thank you, um, and I'll answer any questions if you have any. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yeah, um, I just want to make a comment yeah. first. It's just, it seems to me from what we had on the six o'clock presentation on, on the AB 101, that perhaps it's best for us to wait on this and see how that really develops and, and make the decision at September 19th. So um, my feeling is we should continue it to then. Uh, Mr. Garola. Yes, uh, two questions. One, uh, how many primary members does the call get to appoint to the policy council? One or two? T uh, typically, it's you, you have a a board, you have a member and an alternate. Okay. Um, some of the agencies have appointed um, either two members and an alternate or an alternate or a member and two alternates. Okay. It just depends on the agency. Okay. And with res thank you. In respect to the uh, AB 101, um, th there are a couple options. Um, one thing that we can do is make the appointments because I do think that there's the advocacy trip to D.C. in September, correct? That's and, correct. And so any member that we appoint to the policy council would then have to be appointed through the uh, selection committee if that is the process that we want to go to and select the policy council as the uh, regional group under AB 101. And so I don't think that um, the process for AB 101 will preclude us from making any decision here um, uh, in terms of who we appoint. And so um, that's just, you know, my thought as well. And, you know, if there is an opportunity, I would like to be considered as uh, one of the alternates to uh, the policy council. I'd like to be more involved in, in this group as well. Thank you. I'm, I'm a little confused on that because the, the AB 101 will require three members, a county supervisor, large city, small city. So are you proposing that we go along with, with that format or we just ignore that for the time being and then reappoint? later i think we can make the decision the appointments now and uh, if we need to to modify the appointments we can go ahead uh, at that future time and um uh, go through the pol go through the uh, city selection committee um but if the consensus of the board is just to uh to wait then that you know uh, is something that we can do but i do want to be considered as a potential alternate for this group okay Mr. Chair, if I'd like to yes. make sure that I understand this, uh, I, I think I'm following uh, what Councilman Garolo is saying is that even if you don't have the, the selection committee that, that might be put out for AB 101, um, this uh, San Joaquin Valley Policy Council, we have to do that anyway. Is that not correct? I mean, it, it's, it, that has to be done to have one. Are you talking about for the Washington trip? No, or no. For this? Well, thi this, this committee was put together um, when we started. It was a little bit before SB 375. But it was, it was put together to as kind of a, a group with the eight. Because, we're, because of air quality issues and other right. issues, we're connected to all the other uh, seven counties no no so I it made sense to I, make I don't mean the purpose what I'm saying is that even if let's let's just pretend AB 101 didn't exist um, this San Joaquin Valley Policy Committee uh, you say we need either two appointees one alternate or one appointee and two alternates no you well we already have uh, Mayor Cantu mm -hmm. is is the appointment okay and um, Alex Garcia That's is the right. alternate that's that is what everyone is um we're compliant recommended right. to okay. as having as a board member and an alternate okay so we're looking for what now uh, to add another alternate well i think i think the uh what's well, happened is grace we were already compliant you're right. asking to jump on as a second alternate so we've we've been fine already but we understand you're interested and want to get involved 
So at this point in time, I guess the question is, you would ask how important is it or do we need it now? I don't know that we need it now, but, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's up to the board to decide if, if we need a second alternate uh, to the alternate that we have already, which is Alex. Uh -huh. And so, and I don't know if Wasco has uh, any, any input, if Alex still wants to continue there or not. Uh, but, but I guess my question is whether it's me or not, uh, uh -huh. that's not that. Um, it's whether or not we can do something that today, as, as Mayor Garola is saying, because whatever is set here, it's still not decided whether we're going to do this, the, the, what's recommended sure. or if we're going to stick with whoever is on this policy committee. Yeah. That, that's right. the only two thing. Separate things. Yes, so, so what I thought Mayor Garola was saying is let's go ahead and do this if we're going to do it, you know, add someone, um, because then we're set. And if we go with this, our existing, it's already done. If we don't go with that, then they're going to go with the, the recommended of the, the selection city committee of one large, sure. one small. Sure. That, that, and, that was what I was trying to make And as a primary member, I guess my, my question is, is, uh, is the AB 101 commitment a requirement for the San Joaquin Valley Council members? Or is this something that we could uh, appoint other people for? Um, Mr. Hakimi? Uh, May Mayor Cantu, uh, we we discussed that at at, at six yeah, o'clock. I know yeah. you weren't here. I wasn't here. But there there there, the eight Valley Cogs do not have to use the Policy Council or as their group. Right. However, the the authors of the bill knew that group exist existed and consulted with staff of all the eight Valley Cogs and and the eight Valley. COG director's staffs right now are recommending that that group recommending to their boards okay. ultimately it's a decision of the elected officials whether they want to use that group they can certainly form a, a brand new group um, but I, I believe that the authors of the bill um, are are encouraging the elected officials to come together with an incentive of six million dollars and, and it appears to me and my recommendation is is to use the existing group that has a staff member assigned to it michael sagala uh, w would be the wisest course of action mm -hmm. and the reason why i'm asking is that i'm already we they added a water board and i've already and, and you know this Aaron, uh, so i'm uh, i'm doing that as well um so um we can wait till uh till we figure out what's going to happen in september if we do need to add more people to support you know, my time constraints as well uh, as Alex's or, or whatever the, the council wants to do. But um, um, I'm in a position where I know we're compliant already. I understand, you know, Grace would like to get involved and, and we're all for that if you feel that, that we need uh, additional. I, and I guess I'm saying I don't know if we need it, but, but if we need it, then, then by all means, I'm, I, we may need it if I don't. I don't have time to, to do other boards or other com committees. Right. Mr. Uh, Cantu, you asked me a question, and I don't mm -hmm. know the answer to that question. Okay, <laughs> perfect. So, so Alex hasn't mentioned anything to you? No. Okay. Uh, I guess uh, I'm just thinking that, um, you know, alternates don't have to attend. It's going to be up to them, obviously. Um, but like you mentioned a while <coughs> ago, if it comes to when you can't yeah. attend or the alternate can't attend and we haven't brought anybody on board, then we will not have representation. Yeah. No, you're right, you're right. So having that other <coughs> alternate, irregardless of who it is, uh, and doing that now, yeah. then that it exists and it does, the person isn't you know, required to be there. But if the others mm -hmm. are not going to attend, you have someone there. And, mm -hmm. and that's irregardless of whether the, the Valley uh, Policy Council is used for, for this Maybe new funding or, <coughs> if the, or if the other method is used, <coughs> but you're recommending the policy committee. But I, I just want to be sure we are represented there, um, you know, when we, when we go to whatever it is, yeah. uh, you know, whether whoever it is that you choose to have there. Uh, and, and Mr. Chairman, I may, may I make there. a comment? Yes. So, so, uh, uh, so who, whoever our appointments uh, are to this committee will will likely change if if the city selection and the county make appointments to this board but uh, may mayor garola uh, mentioned an uh, important point is we have a trip coming up in september which will be before our our next meeting in in september so um 
we, we certainly do not have to bring an elected official with us uh, on that trip. The last year, um, we did not. Right, right now, I plan on going with Ms. Napier, and we have room for up to two elected officials to come with us if any of you would like to attend. That is certainly not a requirement. Mm -hmm. um, if, if we um, do not have any of the existing policy council members who want to participate in the Washington trip this year, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you if you desire, maybe you could see if anyone here wants to participate, or, or we can uh, talk to uh, Council Member or Mayor Garcia and see if he wants to participate. But um, we need to make those plans relatively quick, quickly for the Washington trip. We, but we certainly don't need to do either one of them. We we don't have to make appointments to this board, and we don't do not have to send uh, elected officials to Washington. And Aaron, I'll let you know, I haven't heard back from my employer yet uh, on the September dates, but uh, I'll let you know, hopefully uh, the middle of next week, I met with the water committee already earlier today, uh, and we have um, some items that we're gonna be presenting while we're up there in DC, or at least the water committee is, and so, um, so my, I'm interested in going. Uh, I just am waiting on my employer to give me uh, the green light. So I'll let you know by mid middle of next week. So I think what I'm hearing is we can do what we want and appoint whoever we want and, and they can do something for the next couple of months, but it will most likely change in September. Uh, yes, I, I agree. And the way it will change um, after this law is signed is, is the City Selection Committee mm -hmm. will now be appointing two city members and the Board of Supervisors would be appointing one member so we, we the Kern Cog board would get out of the business of appointing members okay. to the to this board okay okay we've had discussion do I hear a motion for motion yeah, I was going to say, we uh, talked about so much, a, what uh, are we going to... a motion that we go ahead and keep it as fast as well as it is right now, and then with the uh, governor signed the bill, that we got to represent the red area, uh, the primary and the secondary, I, I don't want to rest the judgment, but we can't make, and we go ahead and appoint another one. Microphone. Make that as a, uh, <laughs> they asked if you can turn on the mic. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, <you're laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, that <laughs> you know, we've got two primary and a, and a secondary, but if, if one of the two can't go. Right. right. And then if, if, if any of those two, two can't make it, then open it up to, uh, to an alternate to, to go to, to the uh, D.C. trip. If, you know, if that's a concern. Mm -hmm. I'll second that motion. So uh, let, let it, me it's make not clear to me. Are you proposing that uh, another alternate be um, assigned to this board? To continue, no, as not as not to continue as is, correct? I think the motion is to keep it as it is, not right. add an alternate this time. But if there's room for anybody else to go to D.C., then they would be able to go. Yeah. Is that what I'm hearing? Exactly. A and who would be the contact person, uh, Haki Becky? Okay, and that would be once you find out from um, um, Council uh, Mayor Garcia and from Mayor Count Two, if if both or one isn't able to go, then you'll notify the board and see is there someone else who wishes to go, or maybe those who are interested should let you know. That way, you know to contact them with as early as possible and say we are going to have a spot. Well. Because of the Brown Act, that probably would be the best way to go. Um, is if you let if you let me know who is interested, so I can then contact just a couple of you and not right. a majority. Okay. <laughs> All right. <coughs> we have a motion and a second. Mr. Cantu, you wanted to speak anymore? No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. So voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We did it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can, can we ask the question now if there is anyone here tonight that is interested in going if we, we have an open slot? And the trip is the week of November, I mean September 11th. We would um, tr 
leave on Tuesday, return on Friday. Does not work for me. Good for me. The date? Did you get the dates or not? Yes, but I didn't catch the beginning of what you were saying. The the Washington D.C. It was the dates for D.C. Yes, but were you asking what? Who's available? Uh, who I'm asking to go? now if if uh, Mayor Cantu or Mayor Garcia tell me in, in the next week that uh, either one of them or one of them can't go. Right now we have room for two. Um, if there's anyone here tonight that is interested, please please let, let us know now. Uh, those dates do not work for me. Thank you. We'll, we'll give you at least 24 hours notice. <laughs> <laughs> Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman and Board Members. Um, Kern County Fair is coming up September 18th to 29th. Uh, last year we had volunteers from uh, Caltrans District 6. This year we would love to have some volunteers from Caltrans District 9. Um, we also had volunteers from Golden Empire Transit. We would love to have some of those volunteers again this year. Please Can contact. Bike Bakersfield also share that table and, and volunteer? S um, they could okay. certain certainly assist us, yes. Uh, and we would appreciate all, all the uh, help we can get. It's 10, day, 10 days long, the Kern County Fair. Just uh, contact Ms. Ms. Napier if, if your agency would like to provide um, staffing to help us staff that booth. Um, last, last month, uh, in, um, during my evaluation process, we talked about additional training for uh, board members. Um, Mr. Ball sent out a um, couple of emails over the last couple of weeks, and we've agreed to um, hold a couple of training events. We're calling it Kern Cog 101, which will be training for board members, alternates, and uh, staff. Um, we will hold the first event August 27th from 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, at Shafter City Hall. Shafter is going to host. That is not just open to um, Shafter councilmen and any councilman from the entire council members from the entire county or staff members from the entire county are welcome to attend. We will also hold an additional training session before our September 19th board meeting from 3 to 5 p.m. here in the Kern Cog boardroom. As I mentioned, it, this is not just for board members. It, you can send alternates or you, you can even send other uh, council members who've never even been exposed to Kern Cog uh, and staff. Um, if you have one of these uh, letters from the Board of Supervisors in your folder that is addressed to either you or the alternate from your city, please pass that along. The county is um, getting much, much more serious with their enforcement of um, Form 700. So please, if you have not done your Form 700, um, don't, uh, don't let don't have the county report you to the Fair Political Practices Commission, which, which is what they're uh, um, saying they will do. Um, as a reminder, we will be dark in August, so our next meeting is September 19th. In your folders this evening is a copy of Ms. Invina's presentation on RENA, and uh, that also includes uh, Ms. Napier's uh, update on AB 101 and update from Caltrans District 6, uh, which also includes um, a detailed listing of all the projects uh, Gail went over earlier tonight. A timeline covering the next six months. A flyer for the Kern Cog Special Board Workshops, the Kern Cog 101 that I just described. And a copy of, of the email is on the back of that form with the links on our website to a variety of uh, 
of different training resources. And, and I, I highly recommend if, if you're limited on time, um, reference number one, which is an FHWA uh, publication, only 24 um, pages. And then item number four, which is also another FHWA publication, which is specifically geared toward local officials, um, which is also only 24 pages. Th and those are all posted on our website. A uh, copy of an uh, article from the Bakersfield Californian about a potential upcoming extension of the bike path in metropolitan Bakersfield. Projects of uh, progress reports on projects of regional significance. Current Council of Governments news and events with the picture of our former board member who uh, many of us re remember who's still serving out there, Mayor Breeden, who was on the national news multiple times and uh, she is doing well. She's much healthier than she was just a few months ago if, if you know what's going on with her. And finally, an uh, article that relates to the workshop earlier this um, evening, which is about affordable housing permits uh, lagging in Kern County. Subject to any questions you have, Mr. Chairman or board members, that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, I have a 10-year service award for Mr. Ben Raymond. Ten years. It's a very nice clock with uh, your name and ten years on it. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Yeah, you can have the box. <laughs> we all need more boxes, right? <laughs> okay. We're done and nothing in August, so don't show up.